This is our president-elect, Larissa Coco. Yes. Uh, Jazzy awesome. this up. That's right. Now, let me get you started here. So I will put my headset on, and here we go. I just have headsets on for three hours. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Choices: major, minor, diminished, augmented. 
What type of triad happens most often in music? Major. Major. So that we automatically assume a triad is major unless we're told otherwise. Automatically assume. Um, so first we go through and figure out what a triad is. If we looked at the C jam blues, we have C7, F7, C7. What types of triads are those going to be? Major. Major. Because we haven't had any other indication. It's a major triad. Okay? And it's always a major until, can you see anything in C down blues that would be a different type of triad? Yeah, it's a D minor. D minor, right, down at the right. bottom, because the minor tells us otherwise. But all these others are major triads. Okay? So that's the triad. Figure out the triad first, and I suggest these three steps because, um, at, you know, as jazz players go, they're thinking of the whole chord, but I suggest looking at it in three parts because it will get rid of some of the confusion that comes as to what is what. So we figure out the triad. Next, we figure out the seventh because jazz players like sevenths. Um, what type of seventh happens most often in music? A minor seventh, right? So we assume that sevenths are minor sevenths unless they tell us otherwise. Okay. Um, if we have, if you take a look at your sheet, I put down some of the different chord symbols that I've seen for sevenths here. And just because we have some of these here, doesn't mean that those are the only ones you'll ever see. And still, jazz is not as standardized. So right here in the center, you've got C with an MAJ7, C with a capital M7, um, and then that C with the seven is incorrect. It should have a circle around it, but I forgot to circle it before I copied circle it. Circle around the around the seven on this one right here. That's another symbol that I've seen. So it should have a circle around it. So around the seven. Around the seven. Uh huh. Right. That means it's a major seven. If you see right. Seven. Right. Okay. Now let's. Um, and on the back I put it also so you can see that a little bit more clearly, but just so you've got that one. Um, fast way to think of the sevens. When I was younger, I would count up to the seventh note of the scale and then figure out if it was in the scale or if it was a minor seventh, I'd lower it. That takes a little bit of time. It's not so bad in C, but if you're reading an E flat chord or an F sharp chord, it takes a little bit more time to think that. Um, can anyone think of a faster way to go? Go down. So find your octave. Down a half step is your major seventh. Down a whole step is your minor seventh. Okay? So that is a lot faster than we think about. We also have diminished sevenths, um, and we have a unique chord where we combine triad and the seventh to get half diminished. We don't see those as much though, so we focus on the triad, then the seventh, and then anything else that is added on to that. Um, you might see something like flat nine, you might see something like sharp 11. That's just continuing up the scale. Um, and jazz players think in thirds, so they think three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. But it's just the same as nine. Uh, nine is the same as two. Eleven is the same as four. Thirteen is the same as six. Just a hint also, as you're practicing reading chord symbols, you can kind of ignore those extra things to begin with and then add them as you get better. So, um, fast way to think these words because that was one of the things that created a major problem for me was to have to think these chords and then revoice them because usually you don't hear the chords